Dimitri Bivol beats Craig Richards fairly decisively with a unanimous decision. Um, this fight did not go the way I expected at all. Um, if you watch the pre-fight video I did on this fight, um, you'll know that I predicted Craig Richards to get blown away in three rounds. That did not happen. So credit to Craig Richards, he proved me massively wrong um, and has proven that he's a better fighter than I gave him credit for. So this fight never really caught fire, it must be said. Um, the gulf between the two fighters, I feel this is still very clear. Of course, everyone acknowledged it. But <clears throat> despite the, the gap in skill, Craig Richards proved to um, at least be able to keep up, I want to say, keep up um, with Bivol and at least nullify a lot of what Bivol was doing. Uh, <clears throat> the, the jab of Bivol proved to be his best weapon throughout the entire fight, which I think a lot of people expected. Personally, in my prediction, I thought that that would be the f uh, punch that does the most damage. Um, it was definitely very accurate and very prominent, but uh, once again, giving credit to Craig Richards and his punch resistance, he seemed to just come through them. Um, even after the fight, I don't even remember seeing much marking or bruising on uh, Craig Richards' face. So um, definitely a very tough man because Bivol, his, uh, his power's not to be sniffed at. Um, but Bivol, I underestimated how long he had been out the ring. Um, is actually last time we fought, I believe, was October 2019, so it's been a very long time. Whereas Craig Richards, I think, fought as recently as December 2020. So Craig Richards has been more active, although, although it's at a, a lower level, it still counts, you know, he's still the one getting out into the ring. Bivol did try to uh, work off of his jab, because the jab was landing consistently, but that proved to be the only punch that he could make. Um, you know, he could successfully land on a consistent basis. The uh, the left hook, he tried a few times, usually as a lead. Um, he, he was able to catch um, Richards here and there, but not consistent enough and not with the right leverage and the right part of the punch tra trajectory to really damage um, Craig Richards. With the right hand, I don't remember seeing Dimitri Bivol land a clean, crisp um, right hand with power more than once. And I think it's testament to how Richard approached this fight. He he didn't really offer much in terms of offense. He, I, I think early on he was fair, a bit intimidated, but after he took a few jabs, he, he felt the power and he was kind of able to gauge whether he could take it or not. And I think he, he felt as if he could. And he seemed to take it quite well, I must say, because he was taking these jabs clean in the face. Um, and those are stinging shots. But he felt as if he could take them. And, but he still didn't give up. I, I think Craig Richards kind of run out of ideas. He, he didn't know how to approach Bivol because of the gap in experience and skill level. Um, so he was kind of resigned to just damage control, you know, whenever Bivol would try and set up a shot, try and throw a shot, it was really in Craig, Rich Craig Richards' best interest to uh, to just try and minimise the impact. Um, he proved to live up to his, his namesake, the spider. He's very spidery um, in his physique and he was just able to kind of block shots by extending his arms out while going backwards. Um, the right hand would usually meet his left shoulder um, and he was just able to de deflect those shots. And Bivol, I think he lacks a bit of creativity uh, similar to his countryman Sergei Kovlev who we mentioned in the pre-fight video. Uh, in the Russian style of boxing, which I have some experience with, I've had a Russian coach before and I've, you know, I've always, it's always been a style that's resonated with me. Um, being of a, uh, some Russian, Russian ancestry, I must say. Um, there's an emphasis on the straight shots. The Russian coach I worked with, Igor, many years ago when I was a, a teenager, he saw me shadow boxing and I was a massive Mike Tyson fan. I still am, I must say. 
and there's an emphasis on the hooks and uppercuts. I feel like every young boxer who watches Mike Tyson kind of falls into this pattern. And he, he came over to me and he said, hooks, uppercuts, no, don't bother, all straight shots. And we spent hours just drilling straight shots, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, and just developing the, the technique and drilling it as much as we could. And then, you know, trying to get, um, trying to throw it with as much relaxation and effortlessness as possible. So to really get the snap and the elasticity and the technique and the muscles and really just slam those punches in, but with, you know, a lot of polish, a lot of balance, a lot of accuracy. And I feel like Dimitri Bivol comes from that, that, um, that school as well. I mean, he obviously does, but I feel like he doesn't have the knowledge on, on his hooks. And as such, when the, the jab isn't doing enough damage and when the right hand isn't landing cleanly, he can't really rely on other shots. Um, and it was a bit predictable and you start to see it in the fight because there were moments where Craig Richards would say he'd be backed against the ropes and he'd attempt a shoulder roll and he'd actually be able to pull it off. But not necessarily because he's great at the shoulder roll. He obviously has a certain degree of proficiency, but it was more so because Bivol was quite predictable. He, um, there were spots where he didn't mix up his timing and his tempo as much. And because he's typically always throwing those, those jabs and right hands, you know that uh, you can kind of guess the traje trajectory that the punch is going to come from, you know, um, and it makes it easier to counter. Note that I said easier and not easy. Still difficult, but it makes it easier compared to someone who has a wider arsenal, like a Gennady Golovkin, for example. This is someone from the, the Soviet system of boxing. You know, I'm, I'm obviously aware that Kazakhstan is a, an Asian country. And nevertheless, it, it has a similar boxing theory and ideology. And, but Golovkin, nevertheless, he has, he has the straight shots and he has the hooks, you know, the hooking shots, the uppercuts, the body shots, the hooks to the head. Um, but anyway, back to the fight. Craig Richards did himself proud. He managed to reduce the damage as much as he could, go the full 12 rounds. Bivol, a little bit rusty, maybe a little bit predictable as well, an over-reliance on the straight shot. So maybe he has to shake some rust off, but also add to his boxing theory as well. Um, might be a bit more difficult because he's been boxing for so long at such a high level. So <clears throat> it's interesting to see where Bivol will go from here. He's obviously in a very steep division. Um, it's, it's tough to see where he goes. I don't think people are too keen on fighting him, but you know, even though he maybe struggled with some creativity in this fight, he still won comprehensively and um, hopefully gets some momentum from here and he's able to get these big fights, but also able to improve as well because we want to see fighters at their best and reach the, their best possible ability level. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's pretty much it to say on this fight. It never really caught fire. Craig Richards was able to stay out of harm's way for the most part, Dimitri Bivol maybe struggle to go through the gears and, and set up something big. But we'll see what happens in the next few fights. Credit to both men. Um, and so, yeah, let's uh, carry on with the rest of the card, guys. If you like my take on this fight, give me a thumbs up. If you want to discuss the fight, drop a comment in the comment section. And if you like the channel, uh, why not subscribe? So, yeah, thanks for listening, guys.